Welcome back to The Cycle Show. Now, one of the things we love most about cycling is that it's a very wide-ranging activity that usually finds something for everyone. But surely not even cycling could find a space for someone of this size. Gary Brennan weighed 39 stone before he fell in love with cycling. And now look at him. Gary, great to see you here. Thanks very much for Thank having you me. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, you're literally a third of the man that you used to be. Yeah, quite, well, quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> so you were 39 stone. I was 39 stone, yeah. I'm, you're I'm now 13? 13 stone now, yeah. How, how did that happen? Um, it happened by cycling to work. And, you know, as, as crazy as that might sound, it was literally eating less and cycling to work. Were you that size whenever you first got on a bike? Um, I was around about 34, 35 stone when I first started to cycle. I had lost a, a few stone. Um, but yeah, I was, I was around the, the size represented in that uh, cutout. What did the, the guys in whatever shop you went into say or think whenever you went in and said you wanted well, to get a bike that, that fitted you? Yeah, I mean, it, it was quite ironic really because when I first went in, they never actually said anything. But I, I went back around about six months ago for something um, and they did say then at the time that they thought, what a disaster this might end up. And then when they saw me, they was like, amazing. What, what kind of bike did they put you on initially? It was a, a hardtail mountain bike initially. It's a remarkable transformation in, in such a, a short space of time. And you, know, you didn't just use cycling to lose the weight. You're obviously still cycling. You look, you look very fit. Yeah, no, I, um, cycling sort of fell in love with me, really. It's never let me go since. <laughs> what do you do now? Um, I could do anything up to sort of 30, 40 miles a day, you know, when the weather's nice. Um, you know, quite happy to do a sort of 65 mile sportif, no problems. What was it like? I mean, it's quite hilly around where you live. What was it like trying to haul that sort of bulk up any sort of incline? Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. I mean, you know, you can go out of my door and turn left and you're in sort of cosmopolitan Manchester or turn left and you're in the middle of the Peak District with sheep and hills. And I think it was just more a case of sort of looking at the route and planning the route and, and sort of playing to your strengths, really, which in the early days wasn't much. Yeah. So I was trying to find the flattest route possible. No, any hills. Now bring on the hills. Achievable. Yeah, bring on the hills. <laughs> was there one particular incident, Gary, that triggered I need to lose this weight and the extension of that then is I need to lose it on the bike? Um, it was more a case of a culmination of things. You know, I had type 2 diabetes, I had high blood pressure, sleep apnea. You know, I, I was really quite ill um, and it was just a case of, OK, now is sort of the time to wake up and, and get on with it. And when you look back now, do you shudder at the sight of yourself? Do you wonder how you got to that size? Yeah, I really do. I've not seen that cardboard cutout for quite some time, and so I've seen it this morning. is uh, It's quite scary. What, what, what sort of advice would you give? I mean, there, there may be other people in, in your position that are considering losing weight. I mean, as I said before, what, why was it cycling for you? Is there something you can say to them to encourage them to take up a bike rather than anything else? Cycling's fun, you know, and it's very inclusive. You know, anybody can do it. You know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Gary, it's a great story. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing it with us. And the very best of luck with all your riding in the future. Thank you very much. Now, starting off riding a bike used to be such a familiar story. The security of being on stabilizers, the terror of your dad taking them off and then spending ages running alongside you with his hand on the back of the saddle. But it doesn't have to be like that for kids these days. Here's Jill Douglas to tell us why. I'm sure.